just very aware that as I shouted buttocks then there was someone in their garden. That's a bit embarrassing. In this video, I attempt to run a really long way for the first time wearing a pair of these. Oh, hang on. A pair of Vibram barefoot shoes. They're called Vibram V-Runs, obviously black and yellow, as you can see here, and they cost me 135 pounds. They're all muddy because I wore these two days ago. I'm not sure I can call them trainers as there really isn't much to them at all. They're very thin, but they're very robust in equal measure. Probably the worst description these have ever had, but they feel really well made, light and extremely, as you can see here, flexible. I've had these since the end of summer last year. I bought them with my own hard earned English pounds with the intention of running a half marathon in them. I then injured myself messing about on a gym exercise bike, which then led to having to miss the half marathon event and my opportunity to run in those bad boys. I entered into the Royal Parks half for fun, for the buzz of an organized event and to set myself a half marathon PB. I go to the gym as normal, complete my workout and for fun, I decide to see how hard I can go in a sprint. So I dropped a load of watts into the bike. I sprinted really hard. The pedals kept going, stretching my foot to overextend. And I managed to get my left foot out, but my right foot got, got caught. I then threw them to the back of my trainer shelf and pretty much forgot about them until today or until I ran this run. So today's run is my attempt to run a long distance in these Vibram barefoot trainers or shoes. They're barefoot in the sense that they do offer some protection, but if you hit a stone wearing these, you're gonna feel it. So I'm gonna wear these today. I'm gonna try and run as far as I can. Now I've only ever worn these twice before, once for a park run and then once just out on the local roads around my house when I first received them. I got these at the end of summer last year as it was going into winter, so I didn't get a lot of use out of them. However, I found them really, really good to wear. I found them really more comfortable than I actually thought, and they add a completely different dynamic to my running. They blew me away, if I'm honest. Uh, they're completely different to running as opposed to normal trainers. Now, interestingly, the reason why I've decided to do this today, I haven't worn these for a while, so it might be a completely different story today when I go out for a run. But recently, I bought a new pair of just walking around trainers, trainers that I wear on a, on a you know, weekly basis when I go to the shops. I throw these trainers on. Now, I bought a pair of basic Nike trainers, very cushioned, they got the air bubble in them, the sort of trainers you see people wearing out on the high street. And they're massively cushioned, and I noticed that they started to give me, not major, but slight leg pain at the top of my legs and lower back. And it was just where my muscles were getting used to walking in a slight slope, as most trainers make you do. So these are completely flat, they're zero drop. Um, so that basically means that from the heel down to the toes, it is as flat as a pancake. I prefer wearing shoes and trainers like that. Now my work shoes, the shoes that I wear for work, are exactly the same, they're zero drop. So obviously putting these new trainers on, um, and my previous trainers must have been zero drop as well, but putting these new trainers on, I've noticed a big difference in having to wear them. So I'm gonna go for a run in these today. They kind of prompted me to go back to being barefoot. The other thing is, running in barefoot trainers, if you do it for the first time, it can cause injury because you're not used to running, if you're not used to running in barefoot, that is. It's hard for me to quantify what I mean here, but in a nutshell, I heard horror stories from other runners, more experienced runners, who said that barefoot shoes are really hard to wear. The reason why I keep doing that is because the way they described it, it made it sound like these shoes were only for elite runners or people that can class themselves as runners. They weren't for beginners. That's very much how it came across. And of course, that's not the case. Now, I will admit they're not for everyone, but that's true for almost everything you wear or use. Trial and error. You give it a go and you see if it's for you. But what scared me the most was, and this is what I read and this is what I was told, they can cause serious injury if you're not used to wearing them. There are huge benefits to running in barefoot. It makes you run the way nature intends. Now, as you can imagine, before the invention of modern trainers and modern foot cushioning, um, when people ran, they only ever uh, recreational running wasn't a thing, it was running for necessity, catching food, hunting, that sort of thing. That's how our human feet have been evolved to operate. They operate on flat-footed running. 
and you're forced to run on your toes more than your heel. So running barefoot makes you a better runner ergonomically. It gives you better stance and it makes you use the advantages of your toes and the balls of your feet more. That's what these shoes are for. I'm gonna give them a crack today. The microphone starts to get a bit fuzzy here. My point here is that I've noticed that I prefer to wear trainers that have zero drop. That means zero drop from the heel to the toes. Having zero drop trainers hasn't been an intentional strategy of mine. If you watch any of my videos, you will know I don't have a lot of strategy to my running. It's just how it's evolved over the many years since I started running for the first time about four years ago now. I've had really cushioned trainers in the past. I still own a really cushioned pair of hokers and I sometimes wear these hokers for fast or fast for me, five or 10k PB attempts on the road surface. But my running trainer of choice will always be as flat as possible and as simple as possible, which is why I enjoy my trail trainers so much. The trail trainers I currently wear are ultra zero drop trail trainers and i love them that they give me loads of room to spread my toes out and yeah they're brilliant so today's challenge is to try and run a marathon in them 26.2 miles in these bad boys it's either going to make me or break me i'm going to put them on okay right they're on Right. The good thing about wearing these is, yeah, they're really hard to get on. But when they're on, you can really feel the toe separation. They feel strange initially when you first put them on. I haven't worn these for a while now, pretty much since winter of last year. And that was only as a quick tester. So this is going to be interesting. I've also got my microphone on my hat because when I put them on here, I'm going to put my vest on now because I'm going to go for a long run. My hydration vest with some water in it. And it makes a funny noise so i'm going to give it a go wearing it here i look like an instagram moron i'm going to put my vest on and we're going to go out for a run i will add here from the many reports i have read online and i've done a load of research barefoot runners appear to report fewer knee injuries and less heel pain compared to runners who use cushion shoes regularly this report i read specifically talks about physical consequences of wearing and running barefoot shoes this is aside to the benefits of speed, time benefits, and technique in running. However, barefoot runners do report more calf and Achilles injuries. This suggests that people who transition too quickly to barefoot may overload their muscles and tendons. This is something I've read online and I'm very much aware of. Like anything in life, do it wrong or do it badly, and there are consequences, which is why I've decided to try and run 26.2 miles, or just over 42K, in these barefoot shoes. There are huge benefits to wearing or learning to wear barefoot shoes for running. I've read a lot about the benefits and I've wanted to properly try out a pair of these shoes for a while now. They can increase the strength in your feet and ankles. Big tick for me, this is what I'm looking for. They allow your feet and specifically your toes to spread out as nature intended. Imagine running like a child, the way we all used to run as children across the garden or a grassy field on a summer's day in bare feet. It always felt really good. It always felt faster and it, most importantly, it felt natural. I would love to try and capture this and hopefully without stepping on a syringe or broken glass as I did grow up in South East London near Tower Bridge. I'm gonna sound like my nan here. I'm gonna risk sounding like my nan, but children never used to wear 150 pound cushion trainers in the past. We've grown up believing that we need to protect our feet and our children's feet with hardened casing and extremely cushioned soles that allow basketball players to leap 40 feet in the air. We really don't need that. I'm not gonna bang on about this as I could easily get on my soapbox and talk about this for a long time, but running and walking more as nature intended and less like how Nike and Adidas intend us to has got to be a good thing. I'm trying really hard to also not talk about the industrial strength walking shoes that I see people regularly wear to long walking or running events or specifically ultra events. These are unbelievable things. It must be like walking a really long way with lead coffins on your feet. I mean, I understand why the army wear them. I also understand why they're needed for things like scaling Everest. But if you're walking the Thames Path or the Yorkshire Three Peaks or race to the stones in a really heavy pair of walking boots they just weigh you down and they don't do anything for you other than just get yourself a pair of decent trail trainers that's all i'm saying anyway back to the video <laughs> i've literally just left my house and my feet are soaking i've just run for a puddle all right we're out running uh so having just said 
that I've left my house, my feet are now soaking wet. I just ran over boggy ground. With soaking wet feet, I thought I'd talk about some of the virtues of running in barefoot trainers. I thought I'd better make up for the fact that I've just started the video by saying how wet my feet are. So yeah, they're not waterproof at all. They're made for, I think, ergonomic running. So running the way nature intended. They're supposed to help, and this is what I've read online, with strengthening the right leg muscles, so helping me with my running posture, helping me with my ankle strength, my foot strength, so pushing off. I mean, you can't see it, but I'm making the pushing off motion. And I think getting me up onto the ball of my feet off of my heels. Now I should add at this point, I currently weigh 97.8 kg at the moment. And if you're a long-term viewer of my channel, which I hope you are, you will know that I have lost a ton of weight, but my running style has been massively affected by learning how to run several years ago when still being really, really heavy. What I mean by this is that I still, unfortunately, stomp especially when I'm tired. I start to strike the floor with my heels when I'm tired instead of my, the ball of my feet. Doing this in barefoot shoes really starts to hurt after a while. I'm hoping that learning to run wearing these types of shoes will help my running style and eventually will lead onto me changing my running style from being less defensive because of the weight and more proactive. Defensive because of how I learned to run when I was a lot heavier to be more proactive and structured in my running style as I continue to lose more weight which affords me the luxury of being able to think about my running style rather than just finishing the run. They do feel as close to running in barefoot as you possibly can be. Now look at this path I'm running on now. All right, Stony. This is less than my ideal for trying out barefoot trainers but I have to say they really do hold up well I mean I'm a lump occasionally you do come down on a sharp stone a big old sharp stone and you feel it but it teaches you to avoid big old tough stones on the path whereas when you wear trail trainers or normal running trainers um, you just don't need to worry about that unless of course they're bloody boulders then you should avoid them no matter what I've also mentioned one of the downsides being they're not waterproof. I know for a fact you can buy trail versions, trail trainer versions. So why am I wearing them? I've decided for my Thames Path Challenge that's coming up in September, I think, uh, I need to start training. So I've got some big events. I have a 55k ultramarathon in less than three months. I have a fan dance, Tab, which is a route march with a heavy loaded backpack. I have Race of the Stones coming up in July. I have London to Brighton bike ride. As much as I'm not going to be wearing barefoot trainers to any of the aforementioned events, I do want to wear normal trainers or if they're any good after today's run, barefoot trainers for the first half of the Thames Path. Uh, so. Now the first half to the halfway point on the Thames Path, because I did it last year, is footpaths and well-maintained concrete or tarmac footpaths, like the ones I'm running on now. They pretty much look like this all the way. So they'd be really good for running in barefoot. And I've got a sneaky suspicion that barefoot shoes are going to be better for me for an from an endurance perspective. That's a suspicion. Whether that's the reality, hopefully today will tell me. For the second half of the Thames Path, barefoot shoes will not be appropriate. I don't know if you can see, but this is mental. Between 92 and 93k, the fact that I'm still moving is a miracle. I am broken. Running across fields, in pitch black with dew covered grass that soak your feet, uneven terrain, slippery surfaces next to non existent footpaths. Barefoot shoes will not be good for that, so I'll be wearing child trainers, but I can change them at the halfway point. I can have child trainers in my bag, change them at the halfway point. Look at this, this is an old meal, look, so pretty. God, I love spring and I love summer. 
it's just unfortunate we haven't had much of a spring so far it's been raining we're now coming up to two miles and they feel fantastic other than wet socks but I've forgotten about that now I have my hydration for the distance so I've got electrolytes in this one I've got 500 milliliters of plain water and then I've got a litre and a half in my back which is why I currently sound like a water balloon running along but I need to start training as I say I've got less than three months until my first ultra which is a 55k ultra through central London from Woolwich to Richmond ah, finish it There. I ran it last year and I loved it. I thought it was one of the best routes I've ever run. It's called Ultra London. If they did a 100k version of it, I'd run that. It was so good. Through central London, you just don't appreciate how many secret footpaths and parks and alleyways there are from Woolwich to Richmond. Unbelievable. If you want to watch that video, I'll link it in the description. I've got that coming up in less than three months. I ran it last year, I filmed it on my phone. So as much as I'm testing out the trainers, I'm also running with a full hydration pack for the first time this year. And it's starting to rain. Oh my God. We've just hit 10K, so that's 10K down, averaging seven kilometers a minute. Uh, and I've just hit this. I've just hit this really muddy footpath and I'm having to walk on the side of the bank. My feet have dried out a bit. The good thing about these barefoot trainers is the air flow around my feet literally feels like I'm wearing no trainers. So they've dried out and I don't really want to get them wet again. Look at the state of this. Some of these muddy footpaths are actually quite nice to run on because the majority of it is quite soft. Wearing normal trainers, I'd definitely get bogged down. But wearing these shoes, it's nice. It feels like you're running on, well, it feels like you're running on carpet. When you're on hard ground, you can feel every vibration up through your legs and into your hips. I'm talking with confidence on this because that's what I'm feeling now. It feels, oh my nose is so runny. It feels okay. I'm not dying. Okay. He fell over then. Yeah, these are not fit for purpose at all on this part. I'm not gonna come back this way. Yeah, my feet are soaking wet again. I really don't know why I came this way. I've run, it, run this way quite a few times and I uh, should have known running this way would have been a mistake. I'm gonna run back through town. I wanna do the distance and if I end up not doing the distance because of aches and pains or risk of injury, that's fine. But, or even exhaustion. But I don't wanna not do the distance because it's been raining and the footpaths are money. I am starting to feel it in my muscles, on the backs of my legs now, higher up, my thigh muscles. Um, but that could be from the tab, the backpack run, 45 pound backpack run I did uh, three days ago. It could be just remnants of that. It could be a combination of both. It could be the fact that my legs haven't 100% recovered and running in barefoot trainers is using muscles that I don't normally use. This, this is what I'm talking about. Silky smooth footpath. Okay, we've got the main road up here. I'm gonna run the main road. I have my 
saurine butter. What flavour? Raspberry and white chocolate. So I'm going to eat that now. I'm actually quite hungry. I've only done 11k. Uh, but, yeah. Because normally when I get exhausted or something's wrong, I really don't feel hungry. So being hungry is a good thing. You know, burning the amount of calories I'm going to burn today, something would be wrong if I wasn't hungry. And even though I had a big breakfast, I had uh, four slices of toast, which are good for carbs, beans, good for energy, high in calories, mushrooms. There's no reason I'm low on energy. So obviously burning calories, you need to replenish them. And if your body, I've learned this the hard way, many a times I've been out on runs like this, I did it as a tent part, the Thames path. I felt really ill, wasn't hungry at all. So you don't replenish those calories, which then leads you into a vicious cycle of just getting gradually worse and worse and worse to the point of complete exhaustion and risk of collapse. And it's no exaggeration when I say that I was in a bad way. I feel a bit dicky, my stomach's doing somersaults. And then to add to this, there were parts over the next 12K to the halfway pit stop that I thought I was genuinely gonna black out. I was then able to eat something at the halfway point and then I immediately felt better. So being hungry is a good sign and you should replenish calories, which is why I'm also going to eat a naked bar. I have got one more bar in there and I have got an energy gel. Considering I'm hungry, I'm going to eat it. This is the most unappetizing looking stick of food. Peanut butter flavour. Okay, this is the furthest I've run from my house in this direction. I'm at 15k. I'm going to carry on this way for another 6-7k if I can, and I'm gonna turn around. Main road now. Great for the uh, barefoot shoes, because I'm running on tarmac. Not so great for the pace, because I have to keep jumping out the way of cars. A really old church with white doves nesting at the top. I'm not going to go back the way I went, the way I came, just purely because of the muddy footpaths. Oh man, this is not a good road to run on. There's a pavement over here. Let's keep going. I've just turned down this country road uh, which is a dead end. It's ended at a farm, private property. So I can't go any further that way. It's got me to 20 and a half kilometers. I'm gonna head back now because I'm starting to feel it. So at the very least, I hope to hit 40K. Um, but then if I've done 40K, I might as well just do a couple of loops around my house to finish that 42, but we'll see. So sit rep at the halfway mark. How do I feel? I feel all right. I mean, obviously, I've just run over 20K, so I'm starting to feel a bit tired. I've just had some, uh, some sweets, just some sugar to give me a bit of a boost. I am quite hungry, which is a good sign. I might take on my energy gel shortly. How do the shoes feel? So the shoes, the shoes are holding up really well. I've got no, complaints at all, got no pain. The best thing I like about them is the fact that my toes can splay naturally because I have complete independent movement on my toes. You know, they're not being compressed really from the movement of the shoe. So I'm able to spread them out on impact and use them to push off more effectively. Now I'm hoping, one of the reasons I want to try to use barefoot shoes is the advantage of having the toes separated. Help with blisters. I mean, I don't know until I try. I've got no blisters now, so, and I can't feel any forming. So I'm hoping they'll help with blisters. But also, when I do ultras, I lose my toenails. I don't lose all of them, I lose some of them. Last time I did an ultra, I lost both of my big toenails. And the reason for that is because when my feet compact onto the ground, with every stride, I then push off and my toenails obviously grip and doing that thousands of times 
over the course of 100k means that, yeah, they just can't take it. They die at the root and then they fall off two weeks later. They don't hurt. That as a process is painless. I mean, the pain is running 100k, that's the pain. Not the toenails falling off, it's just gross. I'm hoping the fact that my toes being able to move independently of each other means that that's gonna kind of combat that. I don't know until I try, what's the worst that can happen? I have leg ache in muscles that I wouldn't normally have leg ache in. You know, I'll take a rest day. I'll be, I'll be good. I'll be good to go from the day after. Any downside so far? So I wouldn't say it's downside, no negatives, because I am running a long way, but I'm really feeling the muscles on the backs of my legs, kind of the muscles on the backs of my thighs up into my buttocks. I can really feel. So just a, a, very aware that as I shouted buttocks, then there was someone in their garden. That's a bit embarrassing. And it, I think it could be partly to do with the 10 mile backpack run I did a few days ago. That's gonna have a part to play in a lot of my muscles being sore today. So let's keep going. Yeah, that's 21K. Now, let's keep going and then uh, I can have a shower and I've got myself a curry, homemade curry. Tonight I've made it myself. I've already made it because I knew I wouldn't want to stand up in the kitchen making it when I got home. So I've got that to look forward to. I've made a bit of a mistake coming this way. I should have gone back the way I came. I should have just dealt with wet feet rather than run on these country roads. Because you are, it really is hit and miss, literally, with who slows down and who doesn't. So every car coming this way, obviously I'm running on the right so I can see the cars coming. I can then just jump onto the verge. Most people like him pull over, which I, uh, I've got a stone. I've got a stone stuck between my toes then. These shoes, I've realized from jumping onto the verge and running over these trails, they're really not made for anything other than running on track, track and field, and then obviously well-maintained paths that have concrete or tarmac. It's all material with the exception of a thin layer that goes underneath your toes and feet. It's all material. So if you step on a thorn, uh, a sharp stone, you're feeling it. This is my running along this road now. It's so busy. I have to keep. I have to keep stopping to let the cars pass, which is understandable. It's like, you know, <laughs> I'm not moaning. It's, well, I am moaning because it's uh, slow going. So I'm on pavement. My microphone was starting to die the battery. I've only got about 10% left, so I've saved that for the end of the run. Right, microphone's still off. So I'm using the GoPro mic. So I am starting to struggle a bit. I'm just about to hit 31K. It's getting a bit late in the day now. I'm starting to be, get cold. I've just eaten a, uh, what was it? A flapjack, vegan flapjack. Okay, oh, I, 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 I just stopped for a second because the battery died and I had to change the battery. And now my legs are aching because I've stopped. Resume. Right, sit rep, I'm at 31K. I have just over 10K, well, 11K. So yeah, just over 10. The soles of my feet are feeling quite delicate now. Even with the padding, all these stones here, I'm gonna walk this section. I've got these really, really rough stones, this really rough ground. And where I've been crashing down on my feet, because I'm still quite a heavy runner, even though I've lost 90 plus kg, I'm still a heavy runner. And my form has significantly improved, significantly. My time's getting a lot faster. Um, but yeah, I still, I still stamp sometimes when I'm tired. The heel of my right foot, I obviously run um, more on the right heel than I do on the left. So the heel on the right foot is starting to ache a bit. Again, nothing that needs any you know, ibuprofen or anything. There's no significant problem. It's just, I'm starting to feel it. So I'm mentioning it to camera. Hiya. Hiya. Just 
doing an awkward Instagram That's thing. That's alright, go for it. <laughs> Thank you. I've got the embarrassing influencer headphone attached to my hat. So hopefully you can hear me. I look like someone who works in ground control for NASA. I look like a Wally who's running along with a headphones attached to his head. I've just gone through 40K. I've got 2K left, I'm 1K from home. I'm gonna do a loop, 1K loop around my house to bring me back to here and then I can go straight home. And that'll be the 42K point, whatever it is, point two, that will be for a marathon distance. I'm really feeling it now, properly tired. Right, let's do this loop. 200 meters. Ah. Okay. It's done. I'm broken. 26.2 miles on the nose. Done. That took me five and a half hours. That took me five and a half hours. I lost loads of time on those dangerous roads where I had to keep. I must have 50 times. I must have had to have stepped into the verge. I definitely think on flat terrain with good conditions. I, when I say good conditions, I mean I've rested, trained properly. I've definitely got a sub five hour, definitely got a sub five hour. Jury's out on these shoes yet. I need to see how I feel tomorrow. Um, so far, I feel, I mean, I feel fine. I, I, I've run a marathon, so I am absolutely shattered. I'm gonna go home, lie on the shower floor, eat my body weight in curry and rice and bread. I think I might watch a movie tonight. Today's Saturday. However, in regards to the shoes, I've got no complaints at all, none. There are some minor things, but that comes with wearing new shoes. Um, my right heel is aching, but that's the way I run. That's not the shoe's fault. And ultimately, wearing shoes like this is gonna massively improve my running ability. It's one of the reasons I wanna, uh, I wanna wear them. I can feel my muscles hurting, but I think that's because I've run a marathon. So anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't click off just yet now i would say that i do not recommend anyone copy me or copy anything they see someone do on youtube that's always really good advice running in barefoot shoes is a personal choice and experience you need to practice and get used to it and if like me you have never worn them before you should really really try them out on just probably walking around the house in them. I won't say to you, don't do this or don't do that. I certainly won't say to you, don't run a marathon distance in them as a test because I enjoyed it. I would simply say, do what feels appropriate to you. I am now recording this part of the video two days after having run this distance in these shoes. And I can say that yesterday I woke up with some heel pain, nothing major. My heels, especially my right heel, felt tender to walk on. That's it. I've walked around the house like twinkle toes for the past 48 hours, avoiding walking on my heel. Other than that, I've had a really good recovery. I do a lot of running. I do a lot of cycling. I don't know if this played a part in my recovery after wearing these barefoot shoes, but it can't hurt. I wouldn't recommend going from being a non-runner or even a novice runner to running a long way in these, but I think they might be good for a park run or even a really well-maintained cheeky 10K. Overall, in conclusion, I absolutely love them. I'm massively impressed with them. Before I bought them, I thought they were going to take some serious getting used to, like trying to run in a wetsuit or trying to swim in a onesie. Hard to do, but achievable if enough patience and effort is applied. That's not how I feel about these bad boys. I actually felt that these shoes made this run and my running better over this distance. Am I going to be wearing these shoes again? 100% yes. I genuinely do think they will help with my running style, which is ultimately why I bought them. Will I wear them for the first half of the Thames Path Challenge in September? I don't know yet. The jury is still out. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me learn about barefoot running shoes. I'll leave a link to the Vibram barefoot shoes I wore in this video in the description of this video. If you want to check them out, please feel free to do so. Remember, I'm not sponsored by them, but I am open to offers. If you enjoyed this video and saw value in it, then please hit subscribe and like. It massively helps my channel out and it allows me to continue to make more videos like this one. I hope to see you in the next video. It's going to be a really good one. Keep an eye out. Hit the notification bell to be notified when that goes live. Cheers, guys. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found value in watching me overcome this really hard challenge. I'm looking forward to that curry.